a production for Durham Book Festival, commissioned by New Writing North and Ark Stockton. The Unsung, written, directed and edited by Vicky Reeford Sinnott, with co-creators Mandy Colleran, Cheryl Martin, Caroline Parker and Jacqueline Phillips. This piece of work has been created in the circumstances of the coronavirus pandemic. All creative workshops, community workshops, rehearsals and recording have taken place online in an exciting DIY production. Disabled people are finding inventive ways to ensure that we're able to continue to produce work whilst maintaining a public profile. The cast of The Unsung in order of appearance. The Witness, Vicky Rayford Sinnott. Eva, Mandy Colleran. Sandra, Caroline Parker. Joan, Jacqueline Phillips. Josephine, Cheryl Martin. The announcements are made by Alex Depramrong and Black Robin. This is an audio piece with captioning. Stay behind the cordon. Civil disobedience will not be tolerated. Section 1. The Backdrop. Sunday afternoon and the town square is full. Let me introduce myself. I am the witness. Well, that's how I'm described in the script. And having read through it a few times, I can tell you that I am indeed a witness to developments as they happen. I'm here to narrate, commentate and sometimes describe the scene. It's possible to see everything from up here in the central dome of the National Library. I can look down past the carved stone lions, the impossible steps and past the self-important pomp. I can see the townscape as people busy themselves along rivers of roads, red hot heat of tension rising. They don't happen very often here, but there is a protest today. And unusually for the National Library, the windows are open and every noise finds its way inside. Disabled people have organised this protest, tired of the constant pushing and pulling to the extreme edges of cuts to services and benefits. Nothing about us without us. A battle cry for over 40 years. And over on the opposite side, a group in response have gathered to oppose them. The square is cordoned off with nothing but flimsy tape to separate people, like a crime scene. But they obey the tape for now. Down in the crowds, three busy women try to make their way through. Stay behind the cordon. Civil disobedience will not be tolerated. Excuse me. Power trade users are coming through. Excuse me. What's your legs, love? Mine's out. Excuse me. You are blocking the footpath. How's the person supposed to get around this town? Come on now. Excuse me. Watch my kids, please. Careful. Oh, I've never seen so many disabled people in one place. Oh, they're tiny over there. Uh, uh, are you deaf? I'm waving. Hello? Uh, are you deaf? I'm deaf. I'm just wondering what's going on. A protest. Well, be careful. Look after each other. There's not a good feeling in this town. Have you seen this woman, please? She's my sister. She's been missing since yesterday. Here, look. This is Catherine. She's 48 with long red hair. She's learning disabled. She's got a little scar from a lip to a nose. Wouldn't hurt a fly. 
anyone see my sister? She's going to need medication soon. Anyone? Anyone? Inside the grand chamber of the National Library, we meet Josephine, an eternal storyteller, trickster, provocateur. The public generally aren't allowed in here. It's for the board of the archive to meet and discuss the latest additions to the collection. Occasionally, they might invite a university professor in to give their verdict on the value of some great tome. But no one else gets in here, really. Josephine is on a mission, though, and has plans for these women. So, here I am. Reflected images of 21st century Britain greet me. Food and fuel shortages, ration medication, cuts in services and benefits, people on the streets, angry chanting, permitted hate, authoritarian mantras broadcast, and a leader with a vulgar codpiece hanging from a harness, electric shocked hair. Is there any hope here? As an eternal, I live forever, and I've seen it all, not mythical or magical. I am one of the realists, neither god nor goddess. I am sent to challenge and provoke the powerful. The wealth is squandered on fake ego missions to Mars, not even real space travel. And yet they wouldn't look twice at me in the street, someone who has traveled the universe. Mortals have called trickster women like me spinsters, madcaps, and shadows. But I wear my chosen form with pride. Black, queer, disabled, well-rounded with a full life, if you know what I mean. I've tricked kings, pranked presidents, and provoked prime ministers. It's time to grab the patriarchy by the codpiece and twist it. It is the turn of 21st century Britain. A haze of hate is starting to fill the air. People accidentally caught up in it try to get to safe spaces. Everyone these days records their movements into their wristband phones, a kind of proof of what they were doing, say if they were brought in for questioning later, then it's on record what they were doing. Joan, 55 looking for my sister, Catherine. I can't see anyone here that would know her. Moving in and out of groups of people, dodging wheels, walkers, sticks and assistance dogs. There is no threat on this side. People just want to be heard, democracy on the streets. My eyes are everywhere for Catherine. Missing 18 hours now. She's not up to it at all. I don't know how she'll cope. Steady on, mate. I am here, you know. This isn't working. Wading through treacle. Need to get inside, somewhere higher, where I can see everything. Xander, 54, on my way to a funeral. My cousins, another goodbye to happy childhoods. Trying to slice my way through this tension. I can't do crowds. Too much to take in. The disabled people are beginning to look worried about that gang of men spitting out their chant. Burden on the state! Burden on the state! Disgusting. No one really here to protect anybody else. Hey, watch my case! Just one shove and the contents would be confetti. Lost again. <sighs> I'm going to have to sit down. Eva, 54. It's Sunday, so we're all meeting at my mother's house. Four generations of us probably today. My nan is still head of state, soldiering on, keeping order. <laughs> sandwich Sunday it is. So I'm loaded down with Tupperware full of sandwiches. We take it in turns, share the loads. Time to feed everyone and put the world to rights. If I ever get there. This is ridiculous. Mind your backs, please. Oh, God. This is no good. This is a warning. 
Remain calm and stay behind the cordons at all times. Police support is on the way. Zero tolerance of civil disobedience. Build a better Britain. Be a good citizen. Section 2. The women arrive. The scene is set then, and the women are on their way, fighting their way through the chaos, looking for calm. Josephine is ready for them in the Grand Chamber, where the Story Dome is heaving with the weight of culture past. Okay, I'm ready. It's now or never, Britain. Now or never. I see bottles flying through the air. My guess, they can't stay out in that. Excuse me, can I come in here? Yes, yes, come in. It's safe in here, at least for now. It's getting pretty scary out there. Oh, hello. I'm sorry, I followed you up. I need somewhere to look down on the crowds. Yes, come on in. I'm expecting you. We were expected? What do you mean? I just meant, you know, people wanting to shelter. I opened the side door to the lift so you could get in. What an amazing view! You can see everything that's going on from here. I hope they will all be safe. Oh, yes, let me see. So many people. What is this place? I've never seen anything like it. The wood in that table. Is it oak? Mahogany? And as for those chairs, so ornate. Take a seat. This velvet upholstery is intended for backsides far more important than mine. Maybe I'll just perch on the edge. Outrageous rule breaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. I'm glad to get away from that racket. Yes, join us. The door is open. For one day only, anyway. Do you work here, then? No. Just like you, I'm sheltering. Hoping to help the storm pass. Come in, come in and sit down. Already, see, so thank you. I've brought me out. <laughs> um, of course, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... And as for that table, you can see who's intended to sit there. Or not sit there, I should say. Why have a table and then raise it up one level onto a little stage? How bloody unnecessary and how self-important. You sit there, love. And you can look down from that great height, or let low me. Oh, I haven't even clicked. There, most people don't love. It's not your fault. They never imagined the likes of me in somewhere like this. But I'm glad to be out of that loss. The shaven-headed knuckle draggers are out in force. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Eva, by the way. Who are you, love? I'm Josephine, and you're all very welcome. I'm Joan. I'm Zandra, and you might have noticed I'm deaf, so can you make sure I can see you? See your face when you're talking, please. This place is amazing. Oh, the books. Just look at the books. Thousands and thousands of them. Oh, leather bound. Oh, neatly in rows. Mind you, the smell of age is a bit overpowering, but they look very important, it ever so well looked after. Although it's lovely to meet you all, I'm afraid I can't stay. My sister is missing. I was hoping I might see her through the windows. Here, look, here's a photo. Have you seen her? She's quite distinctive. Oh, she's lovely. Look at that gorgeous hair. What's happened, love? We were at the women's vigil in the park last night. It had been so peaceful remembering women victims of domestic violence. Quite a lot of women turned up to pay their respects, given everything that's going on. We went with some colleagues from the Women's Centre where I work and Catherine volunteers. There was a much heavier police presence at that than there is out there today. The police weren't happy about it and started getting pushy, so bloody irresponsible. Well, that was it. Small pockets of trouble started, then it erupted. Catherine was there one minute and gone the next. Oh, God, where is she? This is a lockdown. We must stay Have you reported her missing? Yes, that's all in hand. There's special officers at home with my mum who is past herself. 
She's disabled, my sister, and will need medication soon. She'll be so scared on her own. Well, you've done the right thing. And hopefully someone is with her, trying to help by now. I'm very sorry to hear this. All the right people will be out looking for her. I'm just going to have to go and keep looking. So sorry, but you're going to have to stay here for a while. They're just announcing a town centre lockdown. This is a lockdown. You must stay behind the cordons and anyone inside buildings must stay there. This is a lockdown. Please have your ID ready. Oh no, not now. She could be out there. I need to find her. Come back to the window. There's a balcony out there. Is that door open? You're supposed to say to with that lovely red hair. Oh, good God, the sea of people. Catherine! Catherine! There's just too many people. I'm going to have to get back out there. Listen to me. The others, professional search parties, will be out looking for her. We have to do what they say. It could get so much worse if you go out there and get caught up in something. That would delay you even further. You're safe here. Have you got your phone? It's glued to my hand. Check in. See if there is any news. Come on. Sit down. Just breathe. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hello, Mum. It's me again. Is there any news? Uh-huh. Okay. Build a better Britain. Stay where you are. We will lock down until everyone is accounted for. Have your ID ready and the officers will get to you soon. And so the women now have no choice but to wait it out, no matter how badly they want to get going. They are locked down. Look, if I put these two hardwood shelves here, it makes a ramp up to the table. And then we can all sit together with our big important backsides at their big important table. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit unorthodox, but I like it. I'm game if you can steady me train up a bit. Hey, that's the perfect gradient, that love. Must be these cost shelves. Let me move that chair out of the way. Okay, bye, Mum. Love you. What's happened then? That sounded promising. Well, there is definitely a record of it being arrested. I've no idea how they managed that or why. But they can't tell us which bloody station she's at. How do you lose a person? Apparently, there is a lot going on today. But at least we know she's somewhere. Oh, thank God. You must be so relieved. Then what about her medication? Yep, yep, that's all being passed on now. They're looking into it all. I just hope they get her out of there soon. I'm sure it won't be long now, love. I'm pleased she's safe. I do hope we can get out of here soon. I mean, I'm not being funny, but people are depending on me today. I know, I know. I've got a funeral to go to. Oh, have you, love? Sorry. Mind you, I hope that lot will have gone before we go out. Burden on the state. Been a long time since I've had that shouted in my face. Bloody fascists. Bills are better, Britain. My backside. Section 3, Josephine explains. Let's just press pause for a moment as things begin to ramp up. The anti-disability protesters are letting smoke bombs off. People look shocked. People are scared. How can this be the 21st century, how can there be this much hate on the streets? 
Josephine has seen civil unrest before, of many scales and on many occasions. But how can it be like this in such a civil, wealthy country? Josephine wants action and she wants it now. But will these women help her? They have so much going on. I have gathered you here today. Things just can't go on as they have been. You've gathered us. I don't understand. I thought you said you didn't work here. I don't work here as such, but I am here to do some work. I'm one of the Eternals that world governments hate, try to hide, drive out and discredit. I do work with stories like the ones held here. Well, not like the ones held here, actually. Different stories in all sorts of places and at all sorts of times. I've traveled the world. I've traveled in time. But my role is different to this building. I prank, poke and provoke, but no one actually knows who I am. As a woman, I'm written into the shadows. The great storytellers, Aesop, Loki and Nancy, Everyone knows their stories from ancient Greece, Norse mythology, African and Caribbean gods of storytelling. These men are embedded in culture. And while I receive applause for my work town to town, no one knows my name. Why is that? Why can no one see or hear me still? Okay, what's going on? What's this got to do with us, love? I'm really sorry, but as I said, I am supposed to be somewhere. I know you're busy, but can we sit down together? Let's catch our breath and maybe just listen to each other. We're not going anywhere for a while and I need your help. Oh, please tell us more. I've always wanted to meet an eternal. <laughs> you travel in time and space. It's just like Doctor Who, this. I do, and I have for hundreds of years. But look at me, an older disabled woman who no one knows. Many of us are invisible, but I'm actually disappearing. Look, when I remove my shawl. Oh no, there is something weird. What's happening to your shoulder and chest? They look like they're pixelating, going in and out of focus. This is it, part of the problem. I've been seeing it everywhere in older women just like us, bits and pieces starting to disappear. I fear it will happen to you too. So what did it you actually do then? I value stories. I ask the right, wrong questions. I challenge those in power. I'm a storyteller. Bloody brilliant! Can't imagine there's much demand for that round here, there is there. Do you literally mean you're a storyteller? That makes me think of travelling performers, putting on costumes. Is that a costume, what you're wearing? It looks aged. It's lovely, but it looks like you're taking your time to get it right. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, but no, this isn't a costume. These are my clothes. This is what we wear where I'm from. Eternity. We choose whatever we want. I love stories. That's what I do too. Only I don't tell them. I listen and collect them. You see my case? It's going to burst. It's so full of paper. Notes I've jotted down here and there. I notice. I can't wait to see what's in there. Those stories are needed. What is it that you need from us, then? I'm not really sure what I've got to offer you. Can I tell you as we eat? I think it'll help. I've been traveling for hours to get here. I have a fresh loaf and some butter here. My great aunt always insisted that we sit down together with food as a family to check in every week. Section four, the picnic on the grand table. Sunday sandwiches. What's that? Sorry? Sunday sandwiches. We do it in our family every week. That's where I was going before I got pulled in here. 
two boxes and egg and onion sandwiches. Mmm. Fragrance of the fields of farts. Get <laughs> around. Help yourself. My family was exactly the same. Well, I grew up in a cafe, actually. So everything revolved around food. Food and talking. Egg and onion is unusual for Britain, isn't it? Big at Irish funerals, though. That's us. Good Irish stock. Finely chopped onion mixed into egg mayonnaise. Gives us a little sharp edge. <laughs> we make them every week. As a kid, my mum used to say, don't put too much in them either. We don't want them taking the next party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Didn't want them getting too comfortable and overstaying their welcome. Ooh, we've got quite a spread here. I've got some crisps in my bag. I'll split the bag open and we can share them. I love that we've gone from the eternal to egg sandwiches on their big stupid table in five minutes flat. Priorities. Speaking of priorities, there's a kettle here. I'll stick it on. Tell us more, Josephine. I mentioned Loki and Anansi, who have found their places in folklore as storytelling gods. But there's no place for a non-traditional, unconventional woman like me, black, queer, and disabled. I have to reinvent myself every day, fight for space and make my case, but I'm disappearing. And somewhere like this, the story dome, the grand chamber of the National Library is where both the problem and the solution lie. Oh my God, this is amazing. I mean, it's awful. But it's amazing! But I don't understand why you disappear. Or why you think it might happen to us. Nobody knows I exist anyway. I knew there was something. You said you were expecting us, or something like that. You knew we were coming. The other day I was talking to women at work, some of the younger ones, and I said that I feel like the disappearing woman. Last week, I was trying to get them to serve me in a shop. They'd seen me signing and had turned away. I'm deaf, not invisible, I said. Yes, and Eva too. You've all talked about feeling invisible. You just said, nobody knows I exist. That's why you were chosen. Why me? Chosen? I don't think I've ever been chosen for anything in my life. Well, how do you know all this stuff? Section 5. The Power of Stories As time presses on, Josephine tries to solve the puzzle of why stories are so important in our lives. Build a better Britain. Be a good citizen. Listen to that crap. How does it get to this? What makes people behave like that? I can't imagine what my nan makes of it all. It wasn't until I got older that I understood the value of older women in my life. I'd been surrounded by their kindness, thoughtfulness growing up. They gave me so much that I didn't see, that I wish I could thank them. Same here. I mean, I love where I work now, and I know I'm valued there, but in the outside world, forget it. So many happy memories of unexpected joys. But Josephine, what can we do to help you? You can't just disappear. You mustn't be invisible. It's something to do with this place, and it's something to do with those books. Look at them all packed in above a glass floor or ceiling, depending on where you're positioned. It's heavy with the same story told over and over until it's believed to be true. Yes, yes, they're all the same. And there is rarely any variations, all holding up the same image of what's normal. Men in charge, money wins, and anyone else is a little curiosity on the side. 
with no real life and no real story. This is why I do what I do. What do you do to get the stories, Enzandra? My bag here is overflowing with stories. Here, look at them. I go to different places, cafes, lunch clubs, funerals, and just talk to people, capture the storyteller and whoever their story is about. Everyday people, so many stories that we just never see. Blimey, it's basing at the same thing, love. The women I know are always busy fixing everything for everyone. But I bet they could tell you things that would make your toes pale. <laughs> I bet they could. <laughs> People love to talk and reflect. It's how we see ourselves, isn't it? What are you going to do with them all? That's a good question. It's so weird to have my little overflowing bag in a place like this. Somewhere that all the decisions are made about what stories have value, about who makes it onto those leather-bound shelves. This is a warning. We are in lockdown. Stay where you are. Trespassers will be prosecuted. Have your ID ready. There are some gems here. Absolute gems. This is a bag of treasure. You can hear the voices of people shining through. You're talking about stories. What do you mean exactly? Any stories. They're everywhere, all around us every day. What's your favourite song? Oh, I'm quite old fashioned when it comes to music. I love lots of country music. But I do like women's anthems as well. Respect by Aretha Franklin. Oh, I Am Woman by Helen Reddy. Fantastic. Lifts me right up. All brilliant storytellers. A woman's place a woman's desire, a woman's dreams, a woman's terms. But where are the women like Catherine and you in those classics? Where are the disabled women? Precisely. Where are we? It's all about counting for something, being worth something, about being represented and reflected. We're not telling the truth if we leave out half the stories. And look where that gets us. I like that you mean everyday stories of everyday people. Exactly. So Josephine, you're saying that because disabled people don't exist in stories, in songs, poems, films, books, that you don't exist in society. That's why disabled people have such low status. When I was at my mother's funeral, it was a revelation. I mean, your heart is broken but you take comfort in people's memories. The things I didn't know about my mum, or the things you did know, but you hear them told in different ways. People said lovely things. My uncle Tom was there, mum's brother. Now I have nursed my mother through her illness and spent a lifetime listening to her talking about my dad. He had died young. That cafe they set up, their little adventure was everything to her and the community around it. When he died, she was determined not to lose it. She needed it. She fought for it, had meetings at the bank, everything. Uncle Tom, though, at the funeral, took credit for the whole thing, said he was her advisor. She hadn't known what to do, knew nothing about business, you know, being a young woman with a family. And he virtually wrote her out of her own story. Well, now that I can identify with. The women in the factory, we're painted into the corners. Like, what we do isn't equal to the men doing the same kind of work. And if you're a disabled woman, speaking up for equality the there, they look at you like you're from another planet. I spoke at a meeting where men were dominating, you know, in charge, all puffed up, sitting at their table. Not quite as posh as this one, mind. But they had their little rituals and rules for who could speak and when. Well, I wasn't having that. It happens all the time. 
That's why these papers of yours are so important, Sandra. You are giving people their stories and you are giving us their stories so that we know they were there. We need to take the powerful to task, the ones who decided how this building was stocked, what went on those shelves. They've become parodies of themselves and TV can't seem to eat them up and spoon them out quickly enough. Buffoons put on a show for us while backstage new laws have an ever tightening grip on us. Build a better Britain, have your ID ready. Trespassers will be prosecuted. It's like they're tickling us out front while sharpening knives out the back. And it seems to me that in 21st century Britain, there are rich pickings, but all the tricksters are being hidden away. We need storytellers on every street corner, in every social club, bingo hall. Community center, cafes, funerals. Yes, where we can actually reach people. Section six, important women. The women think about those who've been hidden and why they might be important to each other. Trespassers will be prosecuted. All public buildings must now be evacuated. <laughs> they needn't think we're leaving now. When I was about 17 and Catherine would have been 15, we'd been to the beach. The whole family, extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents. The sun went down and all the men took the kids home. It had never happened before. All the women stayed and we sat around in a circle. We gathered logs and lit a fire. All walks of life, sharing blankets and hot drinks, rosy faces, sparkling eyes. Then stories and jokes, laughing. And then one of them started singing. Catherine joined in. She has a beautiful voice. It was this one night, and I've been trying to recreate it ever since, wherever I go. Sisterhood, safety, solidarity. Women behind the scenes, making things right. Precisely, behind the scenes, hidden away. I found some amazing women on my travels. Some deaf women you might never have heard of. Gertrude Adderley, Queen of the Waves, was the first woman to swim the English Channel, not two hours off the record. Annie Jump Cannon, an astronomer born in Britain but moved to America, classified the night sky, cataloguing the stars and the constellations. But they erased her by not naming the sister march to her. Deaf suffragettes, artists, actors. And this is what Josephine is saying has happened to her. Why isn't Josephine in these books? I understand what you're saying. And those women all deserve recognition. They really do. But I don't think we all have to be big achievers. What do you mean? I liked what you said before about everyday people. I mean, if we only celebrate big achievers. What does that mean to women like those in my family or in the factory? They were not extraordinary in any way, yet they are fighters, leading by doing, feeding their families, paying their bills. This is what I talk about. They are extraordinary, ordinary people. We all are. And what they do remains out of sight. What is celebrated in here has been very carefully carved out and we know it's all about powerful white men. We aren't visible anywhere in this building. I mean, what does it say to you? I don't belong anywhere in here. It leaves me cold. All the marble and granite, the glass. It's not living and breathing, is it? And as I pointed out about this table, nobody ever envisaged a person like me would sit at this table. And that lift to get up here is a grotty little lad on round the side because someone made them do it. I can't imagine anyone I work with coming here. And yet, many of them are remarkable women in their own ways. What they've gone through, 
What you said? This building is like a fortress. It tells you who it thinks you are, puts you in your place the second you enter it. You go quiet, hushed tones, no eye contact. Someone else has decided what culture is, decided what the important bits are, hidden everything to be ashamed of, and put people who don't fit the nationalist stereotype in the dust under the rug. It's all bottled up in here. And that's why the walls and ceiling are creaking. I have a relative who lived for a hundred years in America. She lived through the entire 20th century, saw segregation, separate schooling, lynchings, and then desegregation. And finally saw her young family members go to the best universities. But prejudice and oppression runs deep and we see it in lives and deaths today. She visited South Africa when apartheid ended, and she told us that African people through the ANC wanted to turn the prison in Johannesburg, responsible for so much pain, inhumanity, torture and deaths of so many black people. Well, they wanted to commemorate it in some way, not erase it, but reclaim it. And so the design for a new constitutional courthouse, a public building, was by the people. Local people felt involved and were included. Etched into every wall are the experiences, stories, and artifacts of what the people lived through. And it's a courthouse like no other, a work of human art. It has curved walls, lights up from the inside at night, has an incredible library, brightly colored welcoming seating, huge colored lettering outside the building. They wanted the building to say, I belong to you, you belong to me. Ordinary and extraordinary. I feel speechless, I really do. Why isn't that approach taken everywhere? You forget things, don't you? How to be creative and imaginative. It has an impact on everything. So many people in pain, excluded, not welcome. How far do we have to go down an inhumanity road to treat people equally and with dignity? I've always felt like it was such an indulgent thing to do. Sit around talking about politics and the arts. But it's all connected, isn't it? People feel betrayed and irrelevant, invisible, like you say. And they do act, don't they? Those people in the square today, they didn't have to come out and do that. Just like the sugar girls who stood up for working conditions years and years ago. Could do with them coming back to stay to that place now. We really are the young song. We're invisible and we're disappearing. Section 7. Mistelling Stories. Build a better Britain. Know your place. What the hell was that? They're letting off fireworks. <gasps> and a flare's just gone up. Idiots. They'll be terrifying people. Good God, I hope Catherine's all right. Well, hopefully she's on her way home by now. Here, this telly's working. We could try and get the news on. See what they're saying about what's going on. See how long we're going to be stuck in here. Here we go. And this is how it was reported on the news. As you can see, things have grown here in Centre Square. The crowds have increased, as has the noise level. This protest has been organised by a radical disability group, members of which travel around the country targeting councils who are reforming their services. But this one here today is the biggest yet and the one closest to real outbreaks of violence. Look at how they're showing those images. The disabled people were being pushed back, but they're making it look like the disabled people are the ones pushing. Let me check the square. They are rounding the disabled people and causing a wave of movement. 
people are powerless in that. See, this is what they do. This is what happened at the vigil. It's making people stagger and fall. People are going to get hurt. Why would they do that? Why are they making it look like it's the disabled people that are the troublemakers? Oh my God. Who's this? This is the chairman of the board of the archive speaking. You are trespassing in the grand chamber. You must leave the building. Open the barriers immediately. Police officers will see you safely out. Oh my God. They're getting to us through the TV now. Why do we all have to just sit on our rage? This is so unjust and yet we all sit quietly by. Disabled people are so desperate they have taken to the streets. Women are sick of seeing people abused and brutalised so we take to the streets. And yet all I want to do is roar. I want to roar and tear the house down. Buildings like this, what a load of crap. People broadcasting over the square telling us how to behave. People broadcasting at us in here telling us we are trespassing in a public building. How dare they? We are paying for this building. It is shocking to see everything parceled up here. The occasional subversive story is in here, but I always think society like ours makes space for a bit of subversive activity. For satirists. And then we feel like the government are being called out or taken to task. But there's nothing to back it up. No accountability other than that. A few rubber-headed puppets spitting everywhere. And sometimes there is no satirising a leader who is a clown to begin with. I feel bad. They annoyed me earlier, those protesters. And me. I don't know what's wrong with people. The disabled people, I mean. It's because of them, I thought, that I'd had abuse sales at me. Making a fuss. I mean, I don't believe in settling for second best. And I live as... And every day I speak up for myself. Yeah, why does everything have to be a fight? We have to make a case for our existence wherever we go. I wonder if that's how Catherine feels. Even with me, she makes a case, wants us to let her do more. She's probably stronger than you think. The public boat rocking, it stirs things up. But I've never seen it as clearly as this before. It's not because of the disabled people at all. It's because what has been said about us. How stories have been told about us. You're right, this is all connected. We have to do something. There are dots to be joined. Josephine, are you okay? You okay, love? Something's happening. I'm okay. I'm feeling better. What was it about these papers earlier? You were looking through the stories I brought. Here, sit here. Let's look at them. These are amazing. You've done a fantastic job. One I think you'll be doing forevermore. These are what stop people disappearing. These stories can change the world. We have to make them visible. Give them a place in public life. Section 8, The Perfect Storm. As the ceiling creaks in the story dorm, things are getting completely out of hand outside in the square. The crowds have trebled in size. Those supporting the disabled people are in the majority, but there are lots of counter-protesters. The sound of heavy boots fills the air as the army is drafted in. Another broadcast from the chairman of the board of the archive. I repeat, trespassers must leave the grand chamber. You must leave. Open all of the locks and allow the police entry to escort you out. The ceiling is getting worse. Let's pull over some bookcases to support this end. If this caves in, we are definitely gone. No, can you get that end and we'll take you to cross? Oh my God, be careful. Got it. 
quickly over to that corner. It's sagging. That's it. I think you've done it. Build a better Britain. Civil disobedience will not be tolerated. We must leave the public library. Look! Look at the pages! Look at the stories! And right on cue, the stories began to swirl around the National Library. They plaster themselves to the columns, to the carvings. They cover the holes in the national narrative and the cracks in the glasswork. They paper the walls and the building breathes. It breathes. All the stories, my papers, they're dad and sing. They're clearing the building for us. This is amazing, Sandra. They're changing the shape of the building. I knew you were the right people to choose for this task. The words and the voices and signs dance on the walls and the ceiling is changed. Look at the reshaping what we thought we knew, what we have always been told. Black ink on blank pages. We can wrap ourselves in huge rolls of blank paper and tell new stories from scratch. Just like Sandra. Make our marks. Dirty marks, boot marks, bloody marks. Wait! Stop! Joan! The TV screen! Look! Is that your sister there? Oh my god, where? At the back of that police van. It's her! I'm sure of it! Quick, Joan, get down there! It is! It is! It's Catherine! I've got to go. I must go. Hey, love. She's giving as good as she's getting down there. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Stay safe. Go. Go and get her quickly. Catherine. Catherine. Hey, you. Officer Johnny Broden. I know you. I know your mother and your grandmother. And hasn't your brother Daniel got down syndrome? You should be ashamed of yourself. Disability is family. Those people down there are fighting for their rights, for our rights, for Daniel's rights. You see it every day. All the crap that happens to your own brother. Hate crime and make crime. How can you stop these people having their say? Let that woman go. Her sister's coming down for it. You let her go. We can't keep looking the other way. A civil society is only as good as the respect it has for each and every citizen, no matter what. But in particular, the excluded and the hidden. We are not burdens on the state. No more lies. Remember what it is to be human. Section 9. What will you do? And even though words can crush and kill, and even though between them they have nothing, and even though they should be on the same side, and even though they were brought up better than this, by hard-working mothers, not knowing where the next of anything was coming from. And even though they are held back when the elite come to visit, and even though they are made to doff their caps and tug their forelocks in some dysfunctional, abusive relationship, and even though governments take more from the poor, and even though the pictures painted tell no truth, and even though their uncles were killed in the war, and even though a generation of women brought the country up, and even though their brother or sister is disabled, truths are not told or are misrepresented. And even though divisions are deep, it doesn't stop people with nothing tearing down others. Words can crush and kill. What are we to do? And so, at this end, I remain, watching it all unfold. Smoke subsiding, 
hate steered indoors for another day. I can no longer simply be a witness. That is not enough. Whether it's a drop which ripples or a river of force, what will it be? What change can I make?